Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. Starting any company from scratch is a huge endeavor, and it comes with a never-ending stream of challenges. On today's episode, I spoke to Gary Borum, who's created a number of startups, and the most recent one being Hitpause, a one-click autoresponder for all messaging and social media accounts. He's also the co-founder of Screen Coach. I spoke to Gary about mental health, mindset, his business, how he keeps himself motivated, and the lessons he's learned. Thank you so much for tuning in to Move Your Mind. If you'd like to learn more, you can purchase the Move Your Mind book at nickbrax.com slash book, or you can join the Move Your Mind community at moveyourmind.me. Gary, thank you so much for making the time to come on my podcast. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, mate. No, it's good to... Well, I met you very briefly um, in Melbourne, so it's good to be able to actually have this time to just get to know you a bit on a personal level as well so probably my favorite part about the podcast you get to sit down and and just you know actually have uh, which you know we're going to talk about how we're so distracted through screens and our lives are so busy it's pretty rare to be able to just have can, even with you know your friends and loved ones to have that time to just sit and be present with each other so the podcast gives us that time so you know i appreciate you setting aside that you know time right now to do it yeah thanks mate no it's really important just to just 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 to connect right absolutely so can you for can you give our listeners just a bit of a background on yourself and uh how you came to be what you're doing what you're doing now yeah okay yeah um my uh background's really been in adult behavior change um i spent a a fair time in corporate organizations helping them shape and shift their culture through training programs and communication strategies and the like and um and had the blessings of doing that for quite some time. I also worked with small businesses and helping them. And, uh, and I got a little idea once it was, um, and I know I just talked about it with you before, but my, we had a barbecue at my house and my wife made a random comment about, about kids and screens. And it it popped an idea in my head and I, I came up with a project called screen coach. So for a period of three and a half years, I ran off and did that. And screen coach is a little project where kids earn their screen time from the chores, tasks and movement that they do. And, uh, it's a behavior and reward system that uses screen time and pocket money to uh, to change behaviors in, in, inside the family dynamic. So I ran that project for three and a half years. And uh, and then recently I, I came up with the idea for Hit Pause. And so, you know, Hit Pause is this, this, this simple project, um, pr- product where people can, um, it's like an out of office responder through social media and messaging services. So you might write a little message and say, hey, I'm talking to Nick Brax. So I'll catch you in an hour's time. And you press hit pause and whoever hits you up with WhatsApp, Messenger, Slack, Signal, tell, you know, all these sorts of services, they get that message back. And it really just gives people the opportunity to, um, to step away from their phone and just take some time just to um, you know, do whatever it's important to them. Like you said, with family, friends, connect, hmm. um, or, 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 or maybe focus on a work project. So anyhow, that's my background and how I sort of come to be the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Well, no, it's so important, mate. I mean, I think it's amazing what you're doing and um, we, we're all guilty of it. Like it, it's so addictive. And I think it's the kind of thing where we have to accept that technology and all of this stuff's not going away it's probably only going to become more dominant in our lives and you know you see kids growing up now at such a young age learning how to you know use all these different tools on the phone so I, I don't know how the hell that changes so I think what you're doing and going more from the approach of okay this stuff's here to stay how do we how do we try and actually help people use it in a more healthy way so I think that's such a you know positive thing about what you're doing yeah, look, funny enough, my daughter was in humanities, was talking about the industrial, doing the industrial revolution. Yeah. And we're talking about the agrarian and moving to the industrial revolution. And, you know, it was over a period of 20 to 30 years, this internet connection, this, this, this thing has been so quick to take over us and our lives and our families. You know, you start to see it's even getting quicker. You know, you see the, the, in, the rise of TikTok so quickly. You know, and how it's just taken over marketing. It's it's, it's extraordinary. And Chat GPT, you know, and it's picked up a hundred million, you know, subscribers, me included. You know, in 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 two months, like, and it's getting faster and faster. And like I said, it's not going away. I, I like technology. You know, I mean, I use it a lot for you know, entertainment, education, and I mean, as a parent, sometimes as an electronic babysitter. So you know, I mean, you know, we, we, it's yeah. here to stay. And and I think that's right. It's that how do we strike that balance? And you know, and what's the impact as well is really one of the big questions I've got. You know, and that's 
that's really what where I love to you know talk about and, and work with people around this mental health side as, as well. Yeah, so I guess from um, from hip pause and the work that you've, I guess the research you've done into mm. um, developing that, are there you know are there some different statistics or information you've found? just about what we're talking about in terms of, you know, how, how much is this affecting people? What's it doing? What are, what are some of the negative implications? You know, what are we seeing? Yeah. So, I mean, there's been some great literature out there and I just grabbed some of these this morning, but Johan Hari and Stolen oh, Focus. He's great. And, yeah. Oh, it's great. Right. And Cal Newport. I just love his work on, on deep work, but there's some really great statistics and, and, and there's a range of things. There's anything from, you know, so 71% of people sleep with their phone right next to them in their bed. You know, um, I know 81% of people check their phone within the first 20 minutes, 37 as soon as they wake up, you know. And so this, this culture of just constantly being on and constantly checking things is starting to pervade. And I got one here the other day, 64% of people check their phone when they're on the toilet. Uh, you know, it's just, if there's those, 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 those funny a- a- answers. But just that recently you had that podcast with Melo uh, Cal- Calaccio. Um, uh, yeah, Melo Clarko. Yeah, yep, yep. And, yep. And, he, and he talked about the fact that you know that that you know jumping from project to project, jumping from meeting to meeting, and that 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 um, that burnout that occur, that occurs, you know that you, it's, there's a, there's a residual buildup over time that occurs, and and so the, what they're finding statistically is that going from meeting to meeting, jumping from app to app, going from conversation to conversation, eventually creates a amount of fatigue. You know, yes, there is a, ma- and a certain amount of efficiency that occurs initially, but then eventually it becomes too much and it overwhelms us. And mm-hmm. we start to see our productivity drop down. We start to see our ability to, to, you know, do deep work, to really concentrate and have those real thoughts that can probably shift an organization or, or have a deeper relationship with someone starts to, to put, to, starts to dissipate. So for me, that's, that's one of the big challenges with technology. Absolutely. No, it's, that is a really good point because it, it is that kind of thing where at the beginning it helps you to become more efficient, but then you just get so reliant and ad, addicted to it where, you know, I, I'm sure this is something that so many people face, but it'll, I, I get anxiety or I just, or it's, auto, or it's almost automatic where you get a message, you like you're saying, you know, um, social media people hit you up and I have this, I'm compelled to reply straight away. And then often I'm doing it and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I might be in the middle of like some important work. And I'm like, hang on, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you replying? But I can't help it. Like you feel this right. urge to do it. So it's breaking that pattern and trying to teach yourself. Yeah. I think you're right on top of it, Nick. Like, you know, we need to build this mental, this muscle, this ability. And it's a, it's a two-way conversation. Yes. Cause guilty as charged, mate. Same, same here. As soon as I hear a ding, I'm answering it. And uh, statistically, it's about 61% of people answer that, answer that ding within wow. the first five minutes. And so 61%. we're always on. Yeah, it's really high. And, and, and what I found fascinating is because I'm, I'm there, you know, I'm always keeping on top of those messages. When, I, when we start to engage with hit pause, when we start to say, right, I'm taking some time out, there's two parts of the conversation. There's me mate, setting a boundary, right? There's me saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to get back to you in two hours. Um, and and it gives you that 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 time. It's also the rec- receiver to respond. It, and interestingly, this is the funny thing in our in our beta trials, we found that actually the people who receive the message get the most amount of relief. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just being told, "Hey, I'm off. I mean, I'll, I'll get back to you this afternoon, or I'm away for the weekend. I'll get you in the. Uh, I'll get you on Monday." It just stops people doing what they normally do. Because here's what happens typically: if I send you a message, Nick, and you don't respond instantly, I'm like, "Oh, I'll send him a WhatsApp." Ah, yeah. I'll send him a text. Ah, I'll reach out to his friend, to his to his girlfriend. You know, like you know, we start doing that. But as soon as you get that message back, and go, oh, that's cool. You know, we 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 then we that that person moves on to the next thing and can, has this little mental pin in in their in their mind that you'll get back to them later. And that's that's really important. We've got to we've got to really culturally start to accept that where people are setting boundaries, and and it's happening even in, from a legal point of view. Um, yeah. There's a there's a thing over in over in Europe, very a big movement called the right to disconnect. Now it's a legal uh, piece in in Belgium, uh, Ireland, soon to be in the UK, France, uh, where you can actually where you where your employers and customers can't employ can't connect with you all the time because burnout is so prevalent. In fact, even today here here in Australia, we've just had two organisations, the teachers union and, and the police union, have actually uh, in, um, invoked the right to disconnect inside their contract because you know teachers. 
they're getting messages at nine o'clock at night. This little Johnny, does he need a yellow T-shirt or a blue T-shirt tomorrow? Um, you know, or why did my son get a B for that class? I worked really hard on that project. You know, like they're getting it. They're getting messages all the time. And so this right to disconnect is starting to come into play. And that's mm. that's something that we're really passionate about at Hip Horse is helping support that and give and build these boundaries and be a, be that boundary for the for this next generation. Yeah, well, I mean, it because it, it's just not sustainable. Like you can't. It's an interesting thing where, you know, what what do you think long term needs to be done with this? You know, does the government intervene? How would that work? What what provisions need to be put in place? Because it really doesn't seem sustainable for, for people to be functioning 24-7 and, you know, there's no boundaries with anything. But then, you know, it's sort of so hard to find how do we balance this out because it's not going away. Yeah, I think all players have to have to have a say in this. And, you know, historically, governments react to, 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 the, to the people. Like, you know, I know we all sit there and think they run around giving us the rules, but they're only, they're only being led by, 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 by the people they represent. And so I believe that, you know, the, the general population need to say, hey, enough is enough, and, and start to put in those, the, these requirements for boundaries. And, then, and that's, how, that's how the right to, to disconnect started to come through. We mm. actually have here in Australia as well a, a new code of practice that came out for HR around uh, psycho, psycho, psycho somatic um, relationships in the, in the workplace, but really to do with mental health. It's a real code of practice. Now, code of practice is not legally binding, but you know, a lot of large organisations are starting to lean into this and go, okay, we, need, we understand that burnout's happening. Mm. You know, one, of the, one of the impacts of, of COVID, for example, is that there's a lot of people working from home. Mm. Hybrid working you know, is being, has proven very well in certain areas of productivity, it's also started to blur the lines between on and off time, you know, starting to have people who start, you know, they, they wake up at, you know, two in the morning, they're just walking through and they, Oh, I'll just quickly check my messages. And then, Oh, I'll just send this email. And, but yeah. that's okay. Doing it once. And, and so there, but, but I think, like you said, you know, go long term, they start to slowly wear people down. We're having this real high incidence of, of burnout right now. Now, one of the things that really interests me is the, is the relationship to, smartphone adoption here globally and also the the sort of the in, interesting graph of of depression and and um and and anxieties that have sort of gone up not only at, at, at an equal but at actually a higher rate now i, I can't help but think that there's not a not a, a something in that relationship between those two. Oh, i think there has to be there has to be you know and right. and, and again from your research you're seeing that anxiety depression from you know across the board in this area is just increasing because of oh absolutely technology. yeah there's been yeah. lots of research the university of pennsylvania and also in canada as well have put some recent um research out showing that that technology now they're not doing a lot with adults at the moment because it's challenging to do research with adults but a lot of the um young children and early adult hood uh, people are showing incredibly high signs of of anxiety levels that are increasing um, those who present with anxiety, who present with anxiety, responding to their phones and being on call all the time is one of the predominant drivers. It's about twenty to thirty percent is really the driver to them being wound up. Is trying to be on on call all the time, and there's a whole lot of other social things around. Yeah, looking, but you know, it's 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 a complex piece, right? Well, I think that's a real problem. What you're saying there, people with anxiety, you're you're sort of going to be more prone to relying on the phone because you're probably going to use a lot of that as a way to cope with the anxiety. But then by virtue of doing that, you're building negative habits and you're fueling more anxiety. And then you're on this, you know, endless loop where it just gets worse and worse. And how do you break out? So it's yeah. a game, you know, where I guess hit pause is going to be so valuable um, for people like that. I mean, I, I, I can't wait to try and use it because I sort of, I know that I'm not going to, create the discipline myself to you know stop it so putting just something in place like that makes total yeah. sense yeah and here's here's the thing what i love about it is when i put a message in at say six o'clock at night and say i'm off with the family i'll catch you in the morning i don't need to pick it up till yes. six o'clock tomorrow morning now he, this is the interesting i've got to learn how to not want to race off and check it all the time too and I'm, yeah. I, and I'm, I've got to say, my first two, two, two or three weeks, I was, I sucked at it. I was like, yeah. oh, I'll just quickly go check in. Oh, what I don't want to miss. And, and we're backing, you know, we're backing a little bit of FOMO, the, the fear of missing out, my new acronym. 
fallopitid, <laughs> the fear yeah. of letting other people down. And I think that's possibly one of the things that's really holding us back is that fear of, oh, I don't want to let people down. But giving that boundary, letting people know actually, actually gives, resolves that. Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com slash book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group, a women's community group, a general group. We're going to be lo loading up other groups. And you can find all of the links at moveyourmind.me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout running Move Your Mind. And we have live events. We've got courses. We've got huge amounts of value, the ability to share information, share ideas, work in groups together to, to grow and share your learnings, to learn about different topics. You get email reminders. There's a whole lot of features in there. We're constantly updating it, and we're so excited to share it with you. You can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me. Oh, 100%. Because I'm, I'm the mm. same thing where, especially when I'm overseas, I'm working between time zones and I'll, I have my phone set now where it'll go into sleep mode at um, 10, 30 or 11 at night. And then, but you yeah. know, that's still like afternoon or sort of the end of the day in Australia. And when it's on that, I've got all this anxiety that I'm like, oh, well, what if someone's messaging me or trying to call me? And if I don't get back to that now or check it, maybe I'll miss an opportunity or, you know, am I going to be able to? So again, you know, having something where they get a clear message that, hey, you know, received, we're going to get back to you. It, it does give you that extra bit of um, just confidence that, you know. I've got to share this story yeah. with you. I yeah. was um, I was at a, a, a hackathon where they get sort of tech guys with uni kids and, and, and a whole lot just down at the Sunshine Coast University down the road. Yeah. And a whole lot of millennial kids talking about, you know, we're, we're looking at the World Health Organization and, and some of those, those, those mandates and we're creating programs and solutions there. It was a really great weekend. And I thought at the time I was just going to pitch it to, um, to these uh, – to these these uni kids right and see t t pitch them hit pause and i honestly thought i was going to get okay boomer you know we've we, we manage it ourselves thanks um gee i tell you the response was extraordinary they just leapt at me they were like i, I need this i really wow. need this and it's it's really fascinating some That's of the crazy. data again for millennials um, when it comes to millennials in work right now and their burnout and anxiety levels are a lot higher than than the gen z's you know then and, and so so there's a real Mm. this is coming through and um yeah so i was just a fascinating one of the guys shared this story he went off to stradbroke island for the weekend and he started having anxiety and he's a really cool kid but he had real mm. anxiety turning his phone on sunday afternoon for all the splashback he was going to get from friends and stuff so, you know why didn't you tell me you were going and you know where have you been and you know blah, blah, blah. and just you know he just he just knew that just sending that message just just, just you know relieve some of that you know some people are going to be want to want to come and hang with a guy he was cool but <laughs> yeah <you know. laughs> No, it's a, it's so such a good point though. Yeah, hundred percent. I love that story, and um, it is, and that's another that's another thing. You know, you have these time times out, and I've had that experience where I I did it recently. Actually, I was in Australia um, over summer and went on a four day hike, and we had no reception, and um, and it felt amazing. You know, because you like you don't even have a choice, so you're like, oh, even right. if I want to check the fucking thing, I can't. Um, but then as soon as you get you finished you're in you know you're so clear you're in such a good headspace you sit down as soon as you got reception and the phone just going bing 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 <laughs> and then you feel anxiety coming on you're trying to reply an hour's past and you're like what the fuck like i've just undone four days of you know getting away from this in about 30 minutes and it's just like oh my god it's just you know there's no no escaping it how different is the new narrative though i, I love hearing and my phone pinging then but how fun is this new narrative where we um where where going to a going to a luxurious island it, it means that oh it was so luxurious it had no internet oh I couldn't connect with people it's fantastic like that's now a luxury that's actually now a, a you know and when when you said I was I turned my phone off for four days I couldn't turn on my phone for four days because I was hiking the the, the general people were like oh wouldn't that be beautiful. I know, you know it's crazy. Remember when we used to hop, hop in airplanes and, and you'd fly, you know, just like, I don't know, Brizzy to, Brizzy to Melbourne and for two hours you couldn't answer your phone. You'd be like, wow, that's yeah. a luxury. Now they've got Wi-Fi on the phones. No Which way. Which is just a real off. problem. Oh, it's a problem. And it's like, I that's for me because I do a lot of travel and I flew back actually from Melbourne recently and 
I even if I'm on a flight that has Wi-Fi, that's one thing where I just won't connect because I'm like the plane plane trips. It's just permission to well not really anymore because the wi-fi but i try to keep it that way where that's the best thing about flying you know like you're saying in the past like it's like i'm in the air i can't do anything so i may as well just relax or tune out a bit or think about something else but yeah they're, they're sort of corrupting that as well with <laughs> so, um, yeah but, but yeah. yeah interesting when we hear the narrative because we, we actually i still accept oh well nick's in the air for four hours or flying back from canada yeah. that's a, i'm not going to hear from him for 12 hours good on him and, and we actually celebrate it. So I, I actually believe, and I'm, you know, this is this is me speaking with my hit pause hat on, but yeah. I honestly believe that the transition and the, and the change is going to be fairly quick. You know, the, yeah. the the wave of technology has come through and that pendulum's at a certain point where it's just starting to come back. You know, everyone's starting to go, gee, it, yeah. it's a little bit too much. And as I said, I don't think anyone wants to go back to, to, to the old days of, you know, smoke signals and yelling out our window to communicate. But I just think we just want to get this yeah. sort of this balance right. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's our play is to actually help, help people in that space. And um, it's just, it's just great. Some of the stories that people share, you know, how they just, just had that chance just to disconnect. Um, yep. And and also just the ideas. Remember, you used to get great ideas when you're driving in the car or in the shower, mm. just had that quiet time alone, you know, just being able to do that just gives you the ability just to, yeah, have that time to think. No, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, that's the thing, like that quiet time is, when you know hey you can't be creative if you're distracting yourself all the time and you know you need to be able to those downtimes and it's why people like if i'm in the gym you know i'm like you're engaged in what you're doing and that's when your mind you you know you're often having to stop and write notes down because you're like oh shit all these ideas are coming up and it's when you give yourself a consolidated consolidated amount of time and permission to just be present you know with whatever you're doing and not have to be looking at the phone and doing this and doing that so it's it really is a real problem and it's sad because it, it, you know it's causing a lot of us to just miss the important things in life and it's reducing creativity reducing our ability to be present and i couldn't agree more with what you're saying about how it will at some point probably pretty soon on a global level start to change because it has to you know it's like um we we say that thing about going out on a hike or being, you know, away from um, technology is this relief, but we have the control, you know, 24 seven to, to do that whenever we want every day or for part of the day, or, you know, we can, we can turn our device off and, or, and, and do it. So it's just, it, it's so important that we get educated about this and start, you know, making those steps like any other new wellness habit. And um, I guess it's still the wild West, you know, all of this social mm -hmm. media and technology and, we're just reacting it's like this thing you know when you zoom out and look at how quickly all of this has happened it's nothing you know like we we fucking don't have any idea at all what we're doing right now like what we're <laughs> dealing with who knows you know it's like such a new thing yeah and, and, and you know those guys and they're, they're not out there trying to figure out strategies for us to mitigate you know they're trying to they're trying to make their platforms more more, more sticky than the next yeah you know, and that's and that's okay that's that's business right that that's what they're in the in the in the in in, in the game of doing and it's, it's for us to find our way and you know that um social dilemma um piece on on oh, Netflix yeah. is really revealing you know and i i show, I, I watched it with my with my uh, 14 year old daughter and she's she just looked at this stunt are they really doing that so yeah that's what happens you know you just got to be aware of that it's okay you just got to be a, it's okay now and i really love what you said there nick that we we have the power ourselves we've always had the power ourselves yeah. um building that muscle is one part of it actually being socially acceptable to set boundaries is is another part and receiving a boundary because we none of us love a no i don't like being told no i don't like being getting a no i don't want to talk to you you know but the, doing it that in, yeah. in an appropriate fashion you know and that's that's the piece you know for mine you know one of the one of the pieces with with mental health is we've, we've got to start to appreciate the spectrum yeah. of mental health you know with I've, I've 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 had some friends in some really critical conditions and and some really you know required a lot of man health in in professional services and and the like but it also stems all the way through to you know just a little bit tired and fatigued it starts mm -hmm. to come with burnout as well and i think as we start to grasp those 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 ends of the the, the the full gamut of what what mental health looks like then we start to see how we can help ourselves and i i i i'm not here to promote that hit pause is the silver bullet we i believe we're one of the we're, we're a stepping stone towards where we need to head and um, we have a bigger vision for the for the product beyond that but you know, one yep. step at a time, right? Let's just get one out and uh, and see how we can get, how close we can get to the mark. 
No, and it's a great point because there is no silver bullet and hit pause is one important part of the solution. But as you said, this is such a broad area where we need to be educated because, you know, someone well and truly might need to, you know, on an extreme level, go into an inpatient program or, you know, go and see a psychologist, get a therapist, go on medication. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, the majority of us that don't think we have any mental health issues and it's not, you know, it's not severe enough that we need that medical attention. Mm. Pretty much the entire world sits in that category where we can all do more. You know, we can all exercise more. We can all take more time out, you know, from our phones and from these devices and do all these different things. Uh, So that's, you know, that's how we can make change. We need, you know, we need to focus on that because um, we, we can, you know, there's more to be done. Yeah. Yeah. No, well said, mate. Well said. Uh, so appreciate you know all of this, mate. I really liked what we've talked about here. Um, I guess like we finish every episode with five closing questions. So I'm just going to go into those now. Not not throw you under the bus too far. These are pretty pretty straightforward questions. Nothing too crazy. But um, okay. the first one is, what's the best childhood memory that comes to mind for you? Ooh, childhood memory. I, I was only sharing one this one with my daughter the other day. She asked a similar question, and. I want a BMX. And it was part of the SBS World Cup um, telecast or back in the somewhere in the late 70s, early 80s, anyhow. And and just before the final game of the World Cup, they announced the winner. And I was there with dad and uh, and we were excited, ready to watch the World Cup final. And uh and my name got called out. And I, I just remember jumping up and down in the in the in the living room and i don't know back then in the 80s the bmx was it right like that yeah, was the yeah. I, I, I scored a cool bike and my, my name called out on tv I, I remember that that was a really good memory i love that yeah those kind of memories do stick with you don't they those kind of ones when you're a kid it's just such a vivid experience and it stays with you so no i love that mm. uh what what do you think is currently the biggest burden on mental health in society Whew. okay you said they were light questions. <laughs> um, few, few light ones, few heavy ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Sprinkling a few yeah. in, yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably lean, lean it back to what I said earlier is, 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 is us as a, as a society the, the, is understanding the, the breadth of mental health. Yep. And there's two parts. Again, there's two, par- there's two players in this. You know, there's, there's us being able to accept and appreciate what mental health looks like. Me as, me as a recipient of someone saying, look, I'm having a really tough day. Because sometimes it gets that card gets pulled at the time when you really don't need them to do it. I need your help, you know. And and so it's being that being that compassion for, yep. for all the different levels. Because if we don't do it early, then it gets it comes out late. And that's like you said, you know, that's when it comes to um, intervention and 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 a whole range of other services that you know it's a, a long tip. So that's mine. You know, let's 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 start to appreciate the the full gamut and and open ourselves up and appreciate where we are ourselves. I really like what you said there again, Nick. Too. Mm. I, Last week was um, my birthday was earlier this week and I was having a lot of anxiety. It, it ended in a zero. It's a 50. And so I've got balloons over there with all with the 50 in my name on it. But it's um, it was challenging, right? I had some real anxiety coming up and some real, you know, having to be human and face, you know, what I haven't had, haven't achieved. And um, anyhow, there's a breath went off tack. The 10 year anniversary of Under Wraps relaunched with the classic white pair. We've also got new styles coming out super soon. We're donating a dollar from every pair to mental health, currently to one in five. You can find all of this at www.underbracks.com. Well, happy birthday, mate, for the other day. And it is a, it's a common thing, isn't it? I, I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think, and I mean, from me, I don't obviously barely know you, but know about what you're doing. And we've chatted a little bit and you've achieved a huge amount to me, but it's like, I do the same thing. And I turned 36, um, about a week ago and same thing you know all these anxieties the what the Piscians. fuck you know what's that go the piscians <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um but you know it's the same thing i'm thinking you know what the, what's happened you know i'm like i still feel like i'm 20 i'm gonna be 40 in four years this is going too fast i haven't done enough i need more time <laughs> and i just like the fact that when people can talk about it because we all think these things but we often feel or some more anxiety because we we don't realize that other people Welcome are suffering from the you know same thing voiceover speaks descriptions of oh. items on the screen and oh, there we sorry, go we got a sorry <laughs> no problem mate. um anyway yeah I, I just like the fact that you shared that because it I, I think it helps to relate on those things we, we all we all got we all think the same things don't we 
Yeah, we're all human, right? We're all human. Uh, what is um, your personal definition of happiness? Ooh, um, happiness. My experience of happiness is is. Oh, what's my definition? My, my actual experience of happiness recently was just being in the ocean, sun setting, playing with the girls. I just yeah. honestly, I, I just it's those moments. You know, for me, happiness is these beautiful moments. Um, the sunsets at this time of year here in Southeast Queensland are special. I'm just really enjoying them. Um, I think the Aboriginals in this, in the Gubby Gubby people in this area call it the time where birds talk. And as the mm. sun sets around here right now, it is just deafening sometimes with the lorikeets and stuff. That to me sometimes is happiness right now. It's finding these beautiful moments. Um, yeah, that's happiness. That's it. There's nothing better. Exactly. I love that. Mm. Uh, what are you most afraid of? So yeah, they probably should have. I probably am throwing you under the bus here, a bit here. I said there. I I I, I, I got to stop um underselling this. I got to underselling it. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. Look, I can I could vacillate. Sometimes it's just as, in, as simple as you know bullying. I guess I'm afraid to hear of kids and my kids in particular getting mm. bullied. I'm just hopeless with that. When I see that happen in the playground and stuff, I'm a I'm a beast. I just get up and right. Don't do that. You know. I just. Yeah. Uh, that 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 scares me sometimes in, in the way that plays out in, fan, in 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 the play yard and with my girls getting them hurt and anything for all the way up through to what's happening with the global economy right now like i'm real, oh, no, what's gonna happen it's getting crazy you know banks losing billions of dollars and ftx with billions like what's going on it's got to play out somewhere so you know i can get worried about that and he says with a laugh in his voice yeah <laughs> I've no, i can't change it yep there you go um, well, final one, what are you most proud of? Hmm, what am I most proud of? Wow. I could get really meta on that and just, because I was thinking about it coming up to 50 and, and I got to, you know, yeah, I got to see all the things I haven't done, but I also got to sit back and I shared that with a few people and I got some really beautiful reflection for people who sort of like, this is what I like about you, dude, you know, and they just started yeah. telling me things and I got to sit in that as well. Um, I wish we should do that for birthdays. Everyone just give reflections of what they what they yeah. like about you as a person. Maybe do that for your 37th, Nick. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll send you some. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was really lovely the fact that some people really, uh, and this is what I'm probably am proud about for myself, is I see things, an opportunity or hear something and I take that step. You know, I many, many years ago, I, um, I, I, I just got this message to just go travel with my friend, go travel around Australia. And I hopped in a commie with a mate of mine and we were only going to go for 12 months. It took us five years. And, wow. and, uh, you know, and it's just like, it was, it's just part of like hearing that step, you know, hearing my, my wife say, Hey, something about activity trackers and start screen coach. And, Oh, I'm going to, you know, hit, like, I just constantly go, I'm proud of the fact that I, I hear a message and I just take a step in that direction. Um, yeah, that's it. I love that, mate. No, I love that. Taking action. It's, yeah, it's great. You know, well, thank you so much for sharing all of this. And oh, final thing, um, where can our listeners go if they want to learn more about you or Hit Pause or whatever else? We'll put it in the show notes. So yep. where can we send them? Yeah, so if you Google Hit Pause with a Z, as in yep. sleeping, P-A-U-Z-E, um, .com, you'll, you'll see the website and the, the product. We're also in the App Store. So jump into, into the App Store and put in Hit Pause with a Z um, and you'll be able to jump on and have a play. We're in beta right now. We're doing we're doing it now with the public and seeing where we're getting and getting feedback from people. And uh, hey, it's pretty exciting. All right. Well, anyone listening, that'll be in the show notes. So make sure to click on it, try it out. And Gary, thank you so much for making the time, mate. Really enjoyed chatting to you. Yeah, same. Thanks, Nick. That was great. Appreciate it. Thanks to Gary Borum for joining me today for Movie Mind. If you'd like to learn more, you can purchase the Movie Mind book at nickbrax.com slash book, or you can join the Movie Mind community at movieyourmind.me.